Hey guys, I'm Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the PowerCon 2017 exclusive Masters of the Universe Classics Terror, Plasmar, and Lord Grasp 3 pack. Who are these guys? I know that's what a lot of you guys are probably thinking. So this is a really weird and unique pack of characters. And what's cool about this is all three of these very weird looking characters were actually intended to be released in the vintage toy line. Whether they were going to be part of the Powers of Grayskull line that never launched, or maybe just the end of Masters of the Universe is up for debate, but the fact of the matter is that card back art exists for all three of these characters from the vintage line. And essentially, they were all just going to be mashed up existing parts with new colors and new names to create new characters. So what we've got here is the first ever action figure representation of three very weird looking characters that we almost got back in the 80s. I love this kind of stuff and I feel like that makes the perfect convention exclusive because it's so weird and so niche and maybe doesn't appeal to everybody. Let's check these guys out. As you can see, they do come in that larger window box that a lot of the multi-packs came in in the Classics line. So we can see all three of our figures, you can see lots of accessories, we've also got all the names here. So we've got Terror, the evil snake man creature with a sinister shriek, Plasmar, the heroic master of plasma blast power, alright, <laughs> and Lord Grasp, the venomous viper with a crushing claw. Really, really fun, crazy stuff. And if we flip around to the backside, this is the best part. Because not only do we have three brand new bios that kind of introduce these characters to us, but we also have this beautiful artwork, brand new artwork, featuring all three characters kind of doing battle there, bright, vibrant colors. And you see this little guy over here, this white ninja? That's a fun little nod because he's another character that would have been released. Uh, so that's pretty neat little hidden, hidden, hidden character in there. Really fun stuff. But really fun artwork. I love that quite a bit. But let's go and get these guys opened up out of the box and we will take a closer look at them. All right, so we got these three weirdos outside of the box so we can take a closer look at them. And we're going to look at them individually here. But before we do that, I do want to mention that if you already saw my review of the PowerCon exclusive mini comics three pack, uh, I mentioned in that video that there were some issues with the plastic being a little too hard and that causing a little bit of problems. And I'm going to tell you guys right now that since these were produced at the same time, these do feature that same kind of issue. So we're going to talk about that and where it affects each figure as we get to him so i'm gonna go ahead and move lord grasp and plasmar out of the way and we're gonna kick things off by taking a look at terror so as i mentioned when we were looking at these guys in the packaging essentially what we've got here is a weird hodgepodge of mixed up pieces from different characters that creates a brand new character as you can see here we've got a whiplash head with a rat lore body complete with the rat lore tail we've got trap jaws arm cannon We've got this cool little snake emblem belt, which is nice. And then we've got Mosquito's boots. Hey, I like that. I like that. He's got the same fashion sense as Mosquito. Pretty sweet. I don't think we've seen those boots ever reused anywhere else officially. This is the first time besides Mosquito. So pretty cool stuff. But it makes for a really weird looking character. Yet, he's so fun looking, I think. Personally, I think the color scheme helps. He's got this really great purple and black and silver color scheme And I've always thought that purple and black looked really great together It's one of my favorite color combinations and this guy does just looks really cool So he's got an overall great deco. Uh, they did a good job of even though it's different uh, A mixture of parts that are pre-existing from different characters with this new paint deco and the combination It actually does make him look like a different type of character So he's a new snake man character and that's kind of fun. He's got the snake emblem there. He's got that rat or tail the whiplash head works surprisingly well as a snake character and we do have a lot of fun accessories before we get to that let's go ahead and talk about the articulation while it's very basic for a masters of the universe classics figure this is where some of the troubles come in with the harder plastic so first of all he does still have that ball joint at the head however just like before the heads are really hard to pull off of these figures and that creates a new problem for this guy that i'm going to talk about in just a bit 
He's got really tight joints at the shoulders, so you can see kind of those ratchet joints. So the forwards and backwards there, uh, great movement on that. However, the bicep is really loose on him. You can see it really kind of swivels very loosely. You got a standard joint at the elbow, swivel at the wrist. You do have the ab crunch there. Of course, the arm cannon moves just like Trap Jaw's arm cannon. You got a swivel at the waist. You do have the nice ball joints at the thighs. They're pretty loose on this guy, uh, what, like we saw with that mini comics three pack. Swivels at the thigh. You do have nice tight joints at the knee. And then you got swivels at the boot cut and you do have the standard joints at the ankles there So overall articulation is still nice. You can also swivel the tail on the back there It's made of a bit of a softer plastic so it can kind of flex around but you can swivel it there if you need to So he poses around pretty good don't really run into any problems specifically with this guy Except for that loose bicep sometimes when holding on to one of his weapons his arm does kind of flail around just a little bit all right, so before we go any further, I want to talk about this extra piece right here. He comes with the neck extension like we saw with Rattler. So this guy basically would work the same way where he can extend his neck. But because the plastic is so hard and it's so hard to pull the heads off of these guys, only way you're gonna be able to make this work is if you use the hair dryer trick and if you've never done that before essentially if you get a hair dryer you put it on the low warm setting um, just kind of blow it on the figure a little bit it'll loosen it up it basically kind of softens the plastic up that'll allow you to pull the head off pop this neck on and then pop the head on top of it so that way you can get the extending neck look which does look really really cool with this guy however even after doing it the first time like you can see I've got him back to normal now I can't get the head off again and in fact even after I warmed it up it kind of felt like this was splitting at the neck so it was a little scary so honestly with this guy with the way that the plastic came out I would recommend if you're gonna display him that way maybe put him that way one time and then I would not change them back and forth because I'd be too worried about one of those pegs breaking. It's really unfortunate because it's a very cool feature to be able to interchange those out. But unfortunately, with the way the plastic turned out on these guys, it just doesn't function the way it should. So in addition to the neck, he does come with several weapons. He's got the most accessories out of everybody. Of course, since he's got the trap jaw arm, he's got all of the trap jaw weapons. And they're done with a really nice black and silver detail there. They look really nice. And one thing that I was worried about, which didn't turn out to be a problem, you can easily put those pegs in there. Um, they clip in nice and tight, and it's very easy to pop them back out. So you can interchange between the blaster, the hook, and the claw, and they all function exactly like Trap Jaws did. And lastly, he comes with the classic snake staff, just like a lot of the other snake men there. Uh, again, the plastic is so hard that his hand was a little too tight to hold it. I used the hair dryer trick and kind of warmed it up and I repositioned it and after it kind of hardened back up, now it's actually positioned to hold onto the staff much better. So that way you can get him to hold onto that snake staff. This is what I was talking about with the loose bicep though. You can see how loose that kind of swivels around. He does look really nice holding it. It's just a solid color plastic. No extra paint detail on that. That, unfortunately but it's cool that he's got so many accessories and even though it doesn't all work the way it should he's a very cool looking figure and he looks pretty menacing when you've got those accessories on him all right, so let's move along to the next snake man in this set being Lord Grasp. So again, weird hodgepodge of pieces here. He's got the standard body that we see on so many Masters of the Universe characters, but he's got Squeeze's head, he's got a clawful style claw here, and he's rocking Scareglow's cape. Yet, it's all repainted, and he looks very different. I think more so than Terror did. Lord Grasp looks like a a completely original character because that crocodile style head that was used for squeeze doesn't even really look like squeeze to me when it's repainted in this cool black and yellow color scheme and again I think the colors are really fun here I love the bright yellow upon the black and then he's got this orange and kind of green with some nice metallics worked in there and then check out that claw that bright yellow claw has actually got some really fun detail painted on the bottom there that's really nice and it's clean and crisp really good paint deco so very very fun looking figure here now, articulation is pretty much exactly what you would expect, but I want to show some of the problem areas. His torso is really loose. He kind of flops around on the top. 
And I don't know, I pointed this out with that Mini Comics 3-pack as well. I don't know if the legs are kind of attached with the thighs, but I noticed that they, they seem a little too far apart and almost like the uh, skirt looks too, the uh, the skirt, the furry pants look a little too short uh, as a result because you can kind of see the way the legs are positioned there. Also, the thighs are a little looser than the rest. The knees are tighter, so it does make for some awkward posing when you're trying to pose the guy around. Now, I will say it's not too loose that he's like floppy or dangling and doesn't hold a pose but it is a little bit weird when you're trying to pose him around and i keep having these problems where like his thighs are coming over the uh the furry loincloth piece there so it's definitely a bit of an oddball thing happening so he does have the little snap feature on the claw. You can see that kind of snap shut. You can open and close it if you want to. And he does come with one accessory in the form of a snake shield. Uh, very cool. Very similar to King Hiss, of course. And that can clip onto his uh, left hand there to complete his overall look. So he's a little bit more basic in design than Terror. But honestly, I think he's a very fun looking figure. And lastly, that's going to bring us to the heroic Plasmar. Very, very cool looking character here. Reuse of the Fisto head, uh, but it's really neat. I love this like metallic green motif he's got going on with his armor. I do love that translucent red gem that's on the armor. I think that's a really nice touch. Uh, really interesting how he reuses the Rio Blast parts, um, especially on the left arm because he's got the Rio Blast forearm, but just a normal hand over there. So it's not the open palm hand. Um, and then check out these crazy snakes pants he's wearing i guess it's supposed to be like he's wearing snakeskin pants which is really crazy because he's fighting the snake man what kind of message does that send wow i'd be kind of terrified if i were the snake man so it's just like a reuse of the scaly pieces there uh but it makes these crazy like snakeskin pants which is kind of awesome i love it and then he's got the be uh, the big cape there as well so articulation is pretty good on this guy and honestly the joints uh, all seem to function pretty well on him the thighs, again, are a little looser than the rest, but actually not as bad on this figure as some of the others. He does have very, very tight knees, uh, but posing him around doesn't feel as awkward as it does with Lord Grasp. So he's got some fun accessories, and I mentioned those Rio Blast uh, forearms there. He actually comes with the Rio Blast guns, but they're done in this translucent red uh, because he uses like these plasma blasts. So I guess they're supposed to be like plasma or like magic kind of guns, uh, but you can slide those right there inside the peg holes. Uh, he's got the one open hand on the right. It's a little weird because he's got the closed hand on the left, so it doesn't look quite as good as with the gun, uh, but you can still pull off some pretty neat poses with those. And in addition to that is a really interesting accessory because he comes with a horde crossbow, but it's done in that same kind of translucent red because it's supposed to be like a plasma crossbow. It's interesting because it's a horde crossbow and he's a heroic character, but still a fun uh, weapon there. I do love the translucent red. I think that makes for some fun uh, accessory pieces. It's neat to think of them as being like plasma weapons. Um, and overall, I think he's a really fun looking hero character. So there you guys go. There is a look at the brand new PowerCon exclusive three pack featuring Terror, Lord Grasp, and Plasmar. Three very weird characters that actually almost came out in the vintage toy line. They are really, really goofy, but honestly, I, I think the designs are super fun. I mean, they definitely feel very Masters of the Universe, especially with all the reused parts. And it's kind of funny to see something that we almost actually got in the vintage line suddenly come to fruition and be real action figures with real names and real backstories. It's a real shame that there was such a goof at the factory with the plastic because the fact that the, some of the joints are weird and that the interchangeable heads don't work, especially for Terror with that extending neck, that is a huge bummer. And I really hope this is something that Super 7 is addressing. They've already talked about it and they said that they are addressing it. So hopefully no more figures from them will have this problem, uh, but it's definitely something to be wary of. If it keeps you away from purchasing them, I wanna make sure that is out there so you guys know what to expect with these figures. So these were PowerCon exclusives, uh, which means if you did not pick them up at the show, your only option at this point is to find them on the aftermarket or BigBadToyStore.com still has them in stock, though they are a bit on the pricey side. So it really depends on how bad you want to add these guys to your collection. They're a really niche item. Again, I think they do make good convention exclusives and the character designs are so weird. Honestly, I kind of hope Super 7 has plans to bring these guys out in their new 5.5 inch vintage style Masters of the Universe line so that we could get them the way that they would have come out in that original line. I think that'd be super fun. But there you guys go. A look at three weird looking characters 
for Masters of the Universe Classics. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button, leave me a comment, and let me know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss out on any of my toy reviews. Until next time, my friends.